Giallo films enjoyed a steady run of success throughout the 1960s, but it is in 1970 that the subgenre received a major shot in the arm. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage was enormously successful in its native Italy, playing in theatres in Milan for years and inspiring a whole wave of copycat films, mirroring the success and appeal of Mario Bava a decade before. Of course, this was also the feature film debut of a director that would become a much celebrated figurehead for international horror ever since, Dario Argento. Sam is a writer from America who is preparing to finally return home after two years of living the high Italian life. He laments his own inactivity over these years, amongst the peaceful surroundings of Rome. But oh, you just had to go and jinx it, didn't you, Sam? By chance, walking home, he stumbles into the scene of an attempted murder. In his efforts to help, he himself gets trapped at the scene of the crime and attracts the suspicions of the police, who confiscate his passport. Trapped in Italy as more victims are slain, Sam becomes a target himself, being a crucial witness and all. His desire to save his own skin kickstarts an all-consuming obsession into solving these crimes, his intrigue fueled by a series of emerging clues, such as morbid artwork and an unidentifiable unique sound caught on tape. It is only a matter of time before Sam stops the killer, or the killer stops him. Dun, dun, dun. Let's be frank, the plot of this film hardly caused an earthquake with all the ground it was breaking. No, the script was rushed out in a matter of days, and very much plays into the established storylines and traits of existing Jallo movies. What does stand out like a sore, hacked off thumb is the bold visual style from Dario Argento, already operating with a confidence despite his inexperience. Throughout his career, Argento just has a way of making colours appear distinct and striking. This flair, combined with Hitchcockian setups and scenarios, lead to Argento's best work. Take the opening attack from this film as a prime example. Usually, such a scene exists in a sea of darkness, so the whiteness of the art gallery instantly captivates the eyes. Even though you can see everything that's happening, which will be a spooky flow to some audiences itself, you are still helpless to intervene. Just like the main character, who then becomes trapped between the gallery's two glass entrances, privy to the silent screams that lay before him. It is a memorable intro, and buys an astonishing amount of goodwill for the remainder of the film, which does sometimes feel cheap or momentarily slips into a routine hunting a hidden killer kind of thing. Regarding the cheap angle, the dub is the most glaring culprit, but honestly, that is the true villain of all these old international slashers. I forgot to tell you that the thing you wrote has been a great success with the experts, you know? I'm glad, I'm happy. Sam Dalmas, great hope of American literature, now writing manuals on the preservation of rare birds. It'd be funny if I won a prize for it. I can understand it if it takes you out of the movie, but give it a chance, you get used to it. For the most part. Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Fifty years on, the PC police would have a field day with the bird with the crystal plumage. There is a wide selection of strange side characters who crop up from time to time. Some are just wild and weird, like the isolated hermit who only paints in a mystical style from now on, and, more importantly, likes to eat cats. But but but, most of these characters would offend Twitter in one way or another. This is strictly between you and me. No... Police. Police so long. The film's taking cheap shots at female homosexuals who are deemed weird, male homosexuals who are deemed overly camp and invasive of personal space, and a trans character is introduced solely as the butt of a joke. Given the time period and the genre, it could have been much more distasteful. That's the important thing to remember. Well, I should hope so. 
Even the on-screen kills aren't as shocking as you might expect, and nudity is kept to a minimum, only really appearing in one scene. There is a certain degree of taste creeping in here, though it may be at odds with the other content. Speaking of class and taste, Ennio motherfucking Morricone. The man was a legend, and easily one of the greatest film composers to ever glace our undeserving ears. As the kids these days would say, no matter the film, Morricone always understood the assignment. The main theme is such a thing of beauty that it belongs in the art gallery itself. And when Argento wraps up the spooks, the gifted composer knows to go basic. A simple riff, repeated, 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 with greater intensity and tempo. Dario Argento would continue to create films with similar storylines of artists witnessing things they shouldn't, with gloved killers and animals playing key roles, portrayed in bombastic colorization. But the bird with the crystal plumage is where it all started, and a recommended place for audiences themselves to start with.